Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, today we're going to speak a little bit about dietary protein. Uh, many endocrinologists and other doctors are averse to the uh, consumption of protein by diabetics. Uh, to me, this is crazy, but to them, uh, it reflects something way back in their training. And I know what that is because I was around in those days. Uh, back around 1984, an investigator at Harvard named Barry Brenner uh, worked with diabetic rats. He uh, put half of them on a what he called a high-protein diet, and the other half he put on ordinary rat chow. And he maintained their blood sugars very high, and uh, after X months uh, on both diets, uh, although both groups uh, developed uh, rat diabetic kidney disease, the ones on the high-protein diet uh, died earlier. Then comes uh, a meeting, uh, the business meeting of the uh, New York chapter of the American Diabetes Association. And at this particular meeting, uh, I was, uh, my name was on the board for approval as a fellow. I remember I was out of my training a couple of years, maybe one or two years then, and I applied to be a fellow. Uh, all the members of the board knew me. We were on good terms. But before the business meeting was a presentation by Barry Brenner. Uh, Brenner had funding to go all over the country giving his results of his rat study. And uh, uh, Harvard issued press releases. His results were published in all the newspapers and so on. Uh, he started his talk. It was at the New York uh, uh, School of, I think it was NYU School of Dentistry on 3rd Avenue in New York City. And there were several hundred people in the audience, uh, uh, doctors, um, nurse educators, and so on. And he started off by saying that to do his study, he had to decide where to clamp the blood sugars of his rats. So he spoke to the top diabetologists in Boston, where he was stationed, and asked them, where do you like your diabetics to have their blood sugars? And all the doctors replied that they like to keep their diabetic blood sugars at 250 milligrams per deciliter. So Brenner clamped his rats at 250. He then asked the audience, would you agree with this as an appropriate blood sugar for diabetics? Uh, raise your hands if you agree. Uh, and everyone raised their hands. And then he asked, does anyone disagree? And I got up and I said that diabetics are entitled to the same blood sugars as non-diabetics. So it would be uh, more appropriate to say 83 than 185. And I got booed. I got booed for five minutes. And that was the end of my application for a fellowship in the New York chapter of the ADA. Uh, <laughs> I became an enemy instantly. Um, maybe uh, a year or two later, I get uh, called by the office of John Lariff. John Lariff was a pioneer in hypertension research and it was his original ideas that told us about uh, the conversion of angiotensin I to angiotensin II and kidney disease and hypertension. He had worked out all these mechanisms of hypertension 
and was probably responsible for the development of ACE inhibitors, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, for the treatment of hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Uh, anyway, uh, he had a research fellow visiting him from Scotland. Uh, the fellow's name was uh, Gordon Bell. He was a phys physician, uh, recently finished training, or maybe he was at the end of his training. And they were investigating uh, atrial naturetic factor, a uh, hormone made by the atrium of the heart that causes uh, loss of fluid, causes you to pee. Um, and they wanted to see how blood sugars affect atrial nat naturetic factor. And uh, they had never seen any diabetics with normal blood sugars and didn't know how to achieve this, but I had a reputation for having patients with normal blood sugars. So they contacted me and wanted to study two groups of patients, one group with normal hemoglobin A1Cs uh, in the fours and fives, and their groups, their group at uh, uh, New York Medical College, which uh, who all had high A1Cs as recommended by the American Diabetes Association. And uh, we did this study, and sure enough, the atrial naturetic factor, as I recall, was much higher in the usual control diabetics than it was in those with uh, normal blood sugars. Uh, so uh, Gordon Bell uh, wanted to present uh, the paper that he wrote at uh, the National Kidney Foundation meeting in Washington, D.C. And he went down there, uh, got a copy of the uh, uh, archives of the meeting, uh, which was abstracts of each talk, and uh, called me as soon as he got back to tell me that Barry Brenner had given a talk on the same day that he gave his talk, and that Barry Brenner had now uh, taken two groups of rats, both with normal blood sugars, one on a high-protein diet and the other on normal rat chow, and found that both groups uh, did not develop kidney disease uh, and uh, lived normal rat lives. So he totally contradicted his original study, but this study did not get a press release from Harvard he was not given the funds to travel all over the country lecturing. Instead, he went to one kidney meeting, uh, presented his data, and that was the end of it. Uh, I was in my old office. Uh, we had just set up a filing system. Somewhere I filed this uh, book of archives with, uh, or book of abstracts with... Um, the Brenner paper in it, and in recent years, when I've hunted for it, I cannot find it. So I called the National Kidney Foundation and asked them if uh, they could uh, send me a copy of this presentation, and they had discovered they had discarded all of their uh, uh, annual meeting uh, abstracts, uh, going back to. Uh, even prior to the year that I was after. So I don't have any printed evidence, but I know the names of the people, and I know the approximate uh, year in which this occurred. It was probably around 1987 or 88 uh, that uh, Brenner, in effect, retracted what caused this big war on protein. And But to this day, the publicity had been so great uh, uh, damning protein for diabetics 
that this is what they teach in the medical schools. And if you uh, dig out uh, what little has been done in the way of protein uh, for diabetic humans who have kidney disease, you'll find uh, that there is some meager evidence that if a person has end-stage kidney disease and is about to be put on dialysis, and that means a creatinine clearance of under five uh, uh, milliliters per minute, um, almost zero, normal is around 100. Uh, When they get down that far, uh, it might be possible to put off dialysis by a few months if you lower the protein, not eliminate it, you still need uh, at least eight-tenths of a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight to survive. So if you lower the protein that far, maybe you might put off dialysis uh, a few months, like three months. Uh, But that's uncertain. Uh, So in effect, uh, uh, for all practical purposes, diabetics should receive the same amount of protein as non-diabetics. And if you look at our ancestors, this means that the bulk of calories should come from protein. And this is being fought uh, by many endocrinologists today without any information. And when the patients ask them, "Can can you cite one article that supports you, they yell at the patient and say that it, that's an improper question. Uh, that's sort of the story. It's an interesting story. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember that protein is essential for survival of all humans, not just diabetics. And uh, the approximate du- guidelines are for sedentary people who do nothing all day Maybe you can get away with eight-tenths of a gram per kilogram of body weight, uh, but it's more like 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. And if you're physically active, you go up from there. If you're an athlete, you might require uh, several times that 1.2 grams per kilo of body weight. Um, If you only know your weight in pounds, you divide by 2.2 to get kilograms. And every um, ounce of dietary protein, like an ounce of fish or an ounce of hamburger, contains approximately six grams of real protein. So think about this and uh, show this video to your physician if he's pushing you to cut protein. I should mention that I had one patient who uh, I hadn't seen in a year. She came in, she looked like death. She was bent over, frail, very thin, and she had gotten, uh, she had uh, homes in various parts of the world, and her home in Florida uh, came with an endocrinologist who told her to cut out the protein, and uh, she had deteriorated, aged, And the only way we could restore her was to restore the protein in her diet. And that made a big difference. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next session. Uh, Before you sign off from this session of Diabetes University, take a look at my book, Diabetes Solution, which uh, you can view at the site listed below, or you can purchase from any online bookstore. Also, visit my monthly seminars, teleseminars. Uh, The site for getting these free seminars is listed below. Um, You can also uh, join the Diabetes Forum where you can ask questions to other diabetics who have read my book and have been using it. And one last thing is, if you go to the teleseminar, you can ask questions which I will answer, uh, if not the same month that you asked the question, uh, within a month or two thereof. Thanks.